Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and today I'm back with another Last Week in Vegan. So the first story of today is that Canada's Food Guide wants you to go vegan. Or so the internet wants us to think. I read a lot of articles about this today, talking about how the Canadian Food Guide is recommending more plant-based foods and less animal products, so I decided to dive in and look at this new draft of the Canadian Food Guide that came out. And I was a little bit disappointed. Yes, they do seem to want to emphasize plant-based protein sources. They say, Health Canada recommends regular intake of vegetables, fruit, whole grains, and protein-rich foods, especially plant-based sources of protein. And when I read that, I got really, really excited. But there's a little asterisk there. So when you go into the small print, you can see their list of recommended protein sources. And they do put legumes and beans first, which is awesome. They then mention nuts and seeds. They mention soy products, including fortified soy beverages. But then they get right into that list of foods that I would rather not see. Eggs, fish and other seafood, poultry, lean red meats, lower fat milk and yogurt, and cheeses lower in sodium and fat. So while yes, they did say especially plant-based protein sources, and yes, the plant-based protein sources were listed first, they went on to list more protein sources of an animal nature than they listed of a plant-based nature. They also went on to say this, nutritious foods that contain fat, such as homogenized milk, should not be restricted for young children. Now, if what they mean by this is that foods that are high in fat shouldn't necessarily be restricted in young children, I totally agree. Kids need fat. It's important for their diet. But the way they've worded this seems to be saying that homogenized milk or milk products shouldn't be restricted in young children. And that I completely disagree with. Young human children don't need cow's milk. But the wording is very muddy and confusing, and it's hard to know what they're really saying. Then we go on to the next recommendation, which says inclusion of foods that contain mostly unsaturated fats instead of foods that contain mostly saturated fats. Now, if you know a lot about nutrition, you know that means you should be eating less animal products, which contain saturated fat, and more plant-based fat sources, which contain unsaturated fat. And they sort of explain this later. They say a shift towards more plant-based foods can help Canadians eat more fiber-rich foods, eat less red meat, beef, pork, lamb, and goat, and replace foods that contain mostly saturated fat, example cream, high-fat cheeses, and butter, with foods that contain mostly unsaturated fat, example nuts, seeds, and avocado. So yes, they are recommending the reduction of animal products, but they're only recommending the reduction of very specific types of animal products, like red meats and high-fat dairy products, which are things that they've been recommending against for a while now. Now, I don't want to shoot down all the excitement because I definitely was excited to see especially plant-based protein sources. It made my heart flutter, but I'm not really sure that this guide is going as far as we really need it to. Another big miss for me is that they talk about processed foods and why they should be avoided, but they do not once in the entire draft of the guide mention processed meats and that they should be avoided at all costs because they're class one carcinogens in the same category as smoking tobacco. Regardless, I am glad that I spent the time reading through the draft of the guide and filling out the survey that they're currently conducting to get feedback from Canadians on the guide. So if you are Canadian and you care about what the government recommends to the average Canadian that doesn't really know anything about nutrition or animal agriculture to eat, please consider spending a couple minutes of your time filling out the survey and giving feedback on the draft of this new version of the food guide. You just read through each section, you indicate how much you agree or disagree, and then there's a spot to leave your feedback, what you like and dislike about their recommendations. The one other great thing that I noticed was that at the very end, they did mention the environmental impact of animal products and that that was another reason to move towards plant-based foods, saying, the primary focus of Health Canada's proposed healthy eating recommendations is to support health. However, there are also potential environmental benefits of shifting towards healthy eating. In general, diets higher in plant-based foods and lower in animal-based foods are associated with a lesser environmental impact when compared to current diets high in sodium, sugars, and saturated fat. Not too shabby. Another awesome part of this whole feedback thing is that they have a forum where people who are conducting this feedback can go in and talk to each other and leave more recommendations. And I actually saw quite a few people advocating for a more strong stance and more strong recommendations from the government for a plant-based diet, and that got me really excited. I'm going to put some of my favorites up so you guys can see them, and I would highly recommend you guys jump in on those forums, support people whose views you agree with, 
leave your own comments, help to educate people in there. I spent about 20 minutes in the forums before I decided I probably should get to the rest of this video, but I am definitely going to go back in there and I think this is great. I really hope that the government actually listens to what we have to say about their draft. The next story of the day is that vegans now have an official flag. Israeli designer Gadvi Hakimi recently revealed his design for a vegan flag. The flag is green, white, and blue to represent land, sky, and sea, and also light. Hakimi was inspired by the LGBTQ plus movement's rainbow flag and said, every great movement in history has a flag. He followed five rules in creating the flag, only using three colors, not replicating any current flag designs, not using text or seals, using meaningful symbolism, and making it so simple that a child could draw it from memory. Gad created this design with a group of fellow designers and with input from a Facebook group. They said, as vegans, it is our duty to protect all the animals wherever they are, land, sea, and air. What do you guys think of this flag? Do you like it? Do you find it aesthetically pleasing? Do you think it represents you as a vegan? Would you feel proud to carry this flag? Will you use this flag in the future? I'm really interested to see people's thoughts. As for me, I think it's cool for veganism to have a flag. I agree that a flag can be a symbol and help to bring people together, and I think it's an interesting idea. Do I love this flag design? I'm not sure. Maybe it'll grow on me. We'll see. And now on to our rapid fire round. First up, Rabbi challenges synagogues to go vegan. Rabbi Shmuley Yanklowitz has launched the Synagogue Vegan Challenge, where they will select five synagogues in the US and Canada to each receive a grant of $5,000 when they agree to host at least one vegan event every month for a year. Yanklowitz said, there's not one vegan synagogue in America. It's very hard to make changes and we have to make it easier for people. If people see that vegan food can be healthy and tasty, they're more likely to consider a dietary change. The synagogue should be a place of education where people can learn about the health benefits of going vegan. Yanklowitz himself has been vegan for six years and was named one of America's top rabbis by Newsweek in both 2012 and 2013. He co-founded a welfare organization, the Shemayim Veretz Institute. I'm sure I mispronounced that name and I apologize as an educational center that advocates for animal rights within and for the Jewish community. Next up, Brazil will serve 5 million vegan school lunches. Under the new food policy program initiated by Mercy for Animals, Conscious Eating Brazil, three cities will be serving one vegan lunch a week for at least the next year. Veganism is growing quickly in Brazil and this can only help. Horse slaughter may once again become legal in the US. It has been illegal to slaughter horses in the US for more than a decade which means they've been sending their horses to Canada and Mexico to do their dirty work for them. But last week, the House Appropriations Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives voted on an amendment to overturn the standing ban on horse slaughter. Congress voted 27 to 25 against the renewal of the slaughter ban, but it's not final yet because Senate still has to vote. So we can only hope that there will be public outcry and the Senate will decide against dropping this ban. Judge overrules Utah ag gag law. Utah's U.S. District Court Judge Robert Shelby reversed the state's ag gag law last week, stating that the law from 2012 was unconstitutional as it violated the First Amendment right to free speech. In sum, it appears the consensus among courts is that the act of recording is protectable First Amendment speech, and this court agrees. Judge Shelby stated in his ruling. Let's hope that every state in the U.S. that currently has ag gag laws follows suit because the fact that someone can go to jail for recording what's going on is just ridiculous. Last up, France has decided to ban all gas and diesel cars by 2040. France's new environmental minister, Nicolas Hulot, is being praised for his radical stance to ban diesel and gas cars in France by 2040. But they're not the only country doing it. Norway has said they will do the same by 2025. This is amazing. And I agree that countries should be making changes like this. But I can't help but think 2040 is a long way away. What's the earth gonna look like by then? Is it enough? Maybe everyone should go vegan in the meantime. You know, just to be sure there's a planet to drive our new non-gas, non-diesel cars on. So that's it for this week's Last Week in Vegan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like it if you did. Leave me a comment below letting me know your thoughts on this week's stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you really soon in my next one.
Bye.